As we continue this journey mapped out by Lord God Jesus, we're still in a place on the map called Name Jesus. We are now on part four. Prior to this, though, the Lord has revealed to us the very essence of his name, his word within his name. And now we're going to see that which was to become has became and it exists. So we're going to now start in the first book of John. So first John chapter five, verses nine through 13. We take or receive human testimony and this testimony is a witness or evidence. So we receive, take human evidence, testimony, but God's testimony, his evidence, his witness is greater because it is the testimony or the evidence of God, which he has given, or he has bared witness. He's gave evidence and testified for about his son. Whoever believes, and this word believes means to entrust, to have faith in, to have confidence in. Whoever believes in the son of God, that means into a motion implying penetration, a union to a particular purpose or a result. So it's a very intense word. Whoever believes into the son of God has, he holds, he possesses this testimony, this evidence of God. Whoever does not believe God has made him out to be a liar. Because they have not believed the testimony or the evidence, God has bared witness or given about his son. 11. And this is the testimony, the evidence. God has given or, he's, or he has set, placed us eternal life. And this life is in, it's with inside his son. Whoever has the son has life. Whoever does not have the son of God does not have life. And remember, that in Jesus, in the word, is life. And that life is the light of mankind. Verse 13. I write these things to you who believe, who trust into that penetration, remember, into the name of the Son of God, so that, or in order that, you may know that you have eternal life. So the writer here, John, he's saying, you believe, those who believe, you can be assured that you have life because in the word is life and that life is the light of all mankind. That which was snuffed out because of sin is going to be relit inside of you. Let's finish this verse. In that you may believe into the name of the Son of God. The first part of verse 13 says, I write these things to you who already believe into the name that you have eternal life. So it's just reaffirming it. You believe it, you have it. But then it keeps going, this verse, and it says that you may believe. So this is for those who maybe they've never heard the name yet. Maybe they have, but they haven't believed yet. Maybe they're on the fence and they're bouncing back and forth with it. That you may believe into the name. It's an encouragement. Believe into the name of the Son of God so you may have life. So now we're going to move on to the book of John, chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. And I know we've gone over this a couple times. We're going to go it again. We're going to go even deeper into it. Verse one, in the beginning. So this word in means within. So within the beginning. Who's the beginning? Remember Jesus said, I am the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. So just remember that. So within, in the beginning. And that word beginning also, when you start looking into that word, it's an origin. It's a start. And we know that a father from the seed of a father is the start or the origin. So we see within this beginning, the father was. This word was is to exist, the word. And this word means a speech. So within the beginning existed the speech. And the word or the speech existed with God. And this word with means a moving toward a goal or destination. So in the word, the speech existed towards this goal of God. And the word, the speech existed. God was God. He, the word, the speech existed with that moving towards the goal, God in the beginning. And remember the beginning is like the father. Remember we had already learned that in the bosom of the father, was Jesus. And Jesus came forth out of the bosom of the Father to be made known to the world 
so he could be seen and the father can be seen in him and that he was leading you back to the father. Remember, Jesus said, I go back to my father and he wants you to go with him. He's restoring all things. I'm going to start back at verse one again and I'm going to read this dissected. Within the beginning, remember the father existed the word of the speech and this word or speech existed toward God. In the word or speech existed God, was God. In this word or speech, he existed towards this with God in the beginning. Remember we learned that the Lord, he is who he is. He is God. But for his people, he's always reiterating to his people, I will become your God and you will become my people. It doesn't change the fact that God is who he is, the creator, the maker. He's our all in all. But for us, it depends on us. How do we look at it? Do we look at him as God or do we not? So here's this word, this speech in the bosom of the father. And he is God, but he's moving towards a destination, a point of becoming God. Well, what do you mean? He already is God, becoming your God. And so when he fully comes out and he's fully known, he's making himself known here on earth, is our salvation. It's being brought forth so we can see it, we can know it, and we can follow it. Verse 3, through him, this speech, all things became. And without him, this speech, nothing became that has become. 4, in him, in this speech, existed life. In that life existed the light of all mankind. Now I want you to imagine three circles, a large, a medium, and a small. The small is within the medium, the medium is within the large. In the large one, on the very outer, is Jesus, the word or the speech. And within him is the medium, and that is life. And within the medium of life is the small one, which is the light of all mankind. So you see that within the very depth of the word of Jesus, he has all these intricate parts that came out of the Father. So now we're going to move on. We are still in the book of John. We're going to go to chapter 14. And we're going to go through verses 1 through 24. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe into, remember that penetration into God. Believe also into me. And this is Jesus speaking. So he's saying, if you believe into the penetration of God, believe also into the penetration of me. My father's house has many rooms or dwelling places. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going or I'm journeying to prepare a place for you? And if I go or journey and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me in order that where I am, also you exist. I'm going to stop there for a second. I'm going to point out some things. When Jesus says, in order that, where I am, this is actually two Greek words. It means to I and I exist. And then it says also you may exist. Remember, we learned that when the Lord speaks two things, it's set. It's set in stone, just like his commandments. And it's not going anywhere. So when he says, I, I exist, this is what you've heard as a Christian, the great I am. This is the I am. I, I exist. It's not just an I or it's not just an exist. It's both of them together in the context of how he uses it. And, and it's his powerful name. And that's where we see I become who I become is that which becomes and exists. I am. I, I exist. So I wanted to point that out because that's very important. So let me go back here. In order that where I, I exist, also you exist. In where I am going, in other words, where I'm going, I'm being led away under someone's authority. You know, you're going to see with your eyes and your mind's going to understand, in other words, the way, the journey. Verse five, Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know, in other words, with our eyes to see and our minds understand where you are going, where you're getting led under someone's authority. So how can we know? How can we see and understand with our minds this way, this journey? Let me stop there for a moment. So we see here, Jesus is saying, in where I am going, I'm being led under somebody's authority here. He's going to the cross. 
And he's saying, you're going to know it. You're going to see it with your eyes and you're going to understand it in your minds. And this is the journey. And Thomas is saying, oh, we haven't seen it with our eyes. Oh, we haven't understood it with our minds yet. So how can we know this journey in which you're going to be led under? Look at Jesus's answer. Verse six, Jesus answered, I, I exist. There's that double. There's the great I am. I, I exist the way. And this way is also the journey. I am the way, the truth, and the life. So what Jesus is saying here is I am the journey. We have to go back up to verse four, where he was saying he was preparing a place. And he says, I will come back and take you to be with me. In order that where I am, also you exist. In the context of this, he's not saying I'm going to come to you. He's saying where I am, you will also be. You're going to come to me. You're going to go on a journey. And so in this journey, Thomas is asking, what is this journey? And Jesus is saying, I am the journey. I'm actually showing it to you. Remember, Jesus said, deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. So this is what Jesus is saying. I'm, I'm actually doing it. And you now too have to, if you're going to come to where I go, Jesus says, I go to the father. So if we too are supposed to get to the father, Remember, Jesus came out of the bosom of the Father to demonstrate the Father so we are to follow him back to the Father. It is through his blood. It is through his covenant. And there's much more you're going to understand on this journey with him. But remember that. He's going. He's leading by this example. We are to follow it. We are to follow him into the depths of who he is in his name. And we are to be where he is too. So verse 6, and Jesus answered, I I exist the way, the journey, and the truth, and the life. No one comes toward or to the Father except through me, fully across through him. You have to do this. If you really know me, this means a personal experience. You would know. In other words, you would really see and understand with your mind, my Father as well. From now on, you do know through a personal experience him and have seen It's a spiritual perception. Have seen him. Verse 8, Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, So long a time with you I am, and not you have known me, Philip. Anyone who has seen with a spiritual perception has seen, that same word seen, the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Not you believe that I am in and that's with inside the Father, and that the Father is in me. The words, and this word words means to speak or speech by a living voice. It's active by faith. I call it the active word. So these active words, I say to you, Jesus says, I do not speak on my own. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe, remember to trust, to put your confidence in me. Jesus says in verse 11, that I within the Father and the Father's within me, or at least believe fully through the works themselves. Remember, Jesus did tons of works of the Father. He only would do the works he saw the Father do. He said, if you can't believe the words, then believe the works themselves. Verse 12, truly, truly, I tell you, whoever believes into that penetration of me will do This is to make or do construct the works. And this word works is a task or a deed or employment. So Jesus is saying, whoever believes into the penetration of me will do, they'll construct the very task or the employment I have been working or doing. And they will do this. They will make and construct even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. And this word going means a journey. I'm journeying to the Father. Okay, and he's already said that back in verse four, this journey, taking up his cross, denying himself, taking up his cross and following back to his father. And we know he had to do this so his blood could be shed. We know this is the cup he had to drink. And we too, likewise, have to do the same things that he's called us into doing. A work preordained since the foundation of the world unto him. Verse 13. And I will do, or construct or to make, because or since you ask in, in the sphere of my name, 
so that or in order that the Father may be glorified within the Son. So understanding the depths of the name of God and the name of Jesus brings you into this journey that gets deeper and deeper of understanding him, who he is and who you are to be and the works he has for you. Verse 14, if a certain one thing you ask of me in my name, within my name, I will do it, he says. Because he's saying you've understood who I am. You're understanding all these great things and I will do it because you are following me. Verse 15, if you love me, you will keep my commandments and I will pray the Father and he will give you another advocate to be with you into the age, the spirit of truth. The world cannot accept or receive him because it neither sees him nor knows. And that word knows means to see the eyes and then spiritually discern it or knows him. But you know, you have seen, in other words, and your minds understand him. For he abides with you, close beside you, and will be in you. Verse 18, I will not leave you as orphans. That word orphans means as fatherless. I will come to you. And remember, Jesus is saying this. I will not leave you fatherless. I will come to you. Remember who he came out of. Verse 19. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you see me. I live, you also will live. In that day, you will know, you will see with your eyes and your mind will understand that I, in my Father, within my Father, and you are within me, and I am within you. Whoever has possesses the commands, the commandments, and keeps them or guards them, preserves them, is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love him and show myself to them. Verse 22, then Judas, not Judas Iscariot, said, but Lord, what has become or occurred that you do intend to show yourself to us and not to the world? 23, Jesus replied, if anyone who loves me will obey, they will keep, they will guard, they will watch my word and my father will love them and we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not guard or keep watch of my word. And these words you hear are not my own. They belong to the father who sent me. So let's go back. Judas, not Iscariot, was saying, what is it that is going to become or occur that you are going to show yourselves to us, but not to the whole world? And Jesus' reply was that if anybody, those who love me, they're going to keep guard and watch my word. And those are the ones he's saying that he will reveal himself, him and the Father to them. But those who do not keep guard and watch that word. They will not therefore love him. When you keep and guard and watch and you preserve the word of God, it is an act into loving God. And then God shows himself to you. So when we look at verse 24, anyone who does not love me will not guard or keep watching my teaching. And these words you hear are not my own. They belong to the father who sent me. So the question is, is Do you love Jesus? If you love Jesus, you have to keep, you have to guard, you have to watch his word. You have to love the word. Jesus is the word. When Jesus says love me, he means love the word. So you need to ask yourself these things. Remember, scripture says the word, his word, God's word is above even his name. The very essence of his word is in his name. It's the foundation. And his name then is exalted because his word's in it. And it's backed up by what he says and what he does. And his works show that. He watches his word to perform it. God is faithful. So for me to guard and watch and preserve his word is to love God, is to love Jesus as one. 
I need to stop and ask myself this. When I think of God, do I love God's word enough that I love him loving me and that I can love others? Do I love his word to the point that I love his mercy? I love his mercy for me and I love the mercy that I can have towards others. Do I love God's word that I love his grace and I love his grace for me and I love his grace that I can have towards somebody else? Likewise, I love his word for the forgiveness he has for me and for the forgiveness I can give to somebody else. But what about this? I love God's word that he judges me. Not in condemnation. We're in a time of grace right now. I'm talking about that he can judge my words, my thoughts, my actions. Remember God says, for those he loves, he corrects, he rebukes. He wants them to be corrected. He wants them to be sanctified. Do I love God, his word? Do I love his word to to do that to me? Even when it hurts, even when I realize, oh, I'm in the wrong, that I would love his word to correct me, to judge my ways. So my way is no longer my way, but it's his way. But can I do that now unto others? Can I love his word to where I judge somebody else's ways with truth and love to correct them into God's way because I love them, but first because I loved him. And let's get even further into this. Do I love God's word when he comes back as judge with wrath and with condemnation to those who never loved his word that I too would love that unto myself because you better hope You have loved his word with that correction. So you have been sanctified and it all starts with his blood. And it's this journey that you take with him and that I'm holy and that I'm able to stand before him. And remember he comes back. He comes back with those, his army. He has those who are going to rule and reign with him. They're going to judge. Can you love his word enough to say he is righteous and faithful enough that when judgment comes upon the earth in wrath and eventually condemnation, you love that. The answer is you should because he's loving his word. God loves his word. He's so faithful to it. He will not break himself from it for he is it in his kingdom is made by the foundation of his word and his righteousness and no evil will enter it. Don't you love that? Don't you love the thought of being in a kingdom that is perfected by his word, perfected by his works, perfected by our Lord's love, and no more wickedness? That is perfection that is complete. So I'm going to end there with Name Jesus Part 4. We have one more, Part 5, and we will be wrapping up Name Jesus in part five.